Hey, what's up everybody? It's Dallas with Gadget Hacks, and today I'm going to show you how to get the Galaxy S7's always on display feature on other AMOLED devices. Now I recently covered an app called Glance Plus that does almost the same thing, but honestly it's a really cool feature, so I've stayed on the lookout for an app that does it even better. In case you're not aware, Samsung's latest flagship devices have a feature that will always display the clock and some other information when your screen is off. It basically turns your phone into a functional desktop whenever you lay it down. And Glance Plus did a really good job of emulating that functionality while keeping battery life in mind, because the Samsung version is using some hardware and software optimizations that other phones won't have. But it wasn't a true always on display. For the sake of battery life, it would eventually turn off in most circumstances. And that's why an app called Always On AMOLED from developer Toma Rosenfeld caught my eye, because it actually stays on indefinitely. Now as the name of the app would suggest, you should only try this out if your phone has an AMOLED screen. If you're unaware, that's a type of display technology where each pixel emits its own light, meaning no power is used to display black pixels since they're simply just not lit up. And because the Always On Display feature uses a screen that consists almost entirely of black pixels, the vast majority of what it's showing won't use any power on an AMOLED screen. LCD screens, on the other hand, have to light up their entire backlight to display anything, so they'd be using a lot of battery power just to show the Always On clock. So HTC, Sony, and LG owners should probably stay away from this one, since those devices use traditional LCD displays. But if you have a Nexus 6, Nexus 6P, a Motorola, a Huawei, or even an older Samsung device, this is definitely worth checking out. Once you have the app installed though, it's pretty simple to set up. For starters, you'll be greeted by this walkthrough. It basically asks you to enable a few permissions, and doing that is as simple as pressing the Allow Now button, then toggling the switch, and heading back to the app to do this one more time. With that out of the way though, you're pretty much done with setup, and all that's left to do is to customize things a bit. First, make sure the two switches under General are enabled, because that'll make sure the service is on and doesn't get cleared from memory. Beneath that, you'll probably want to enable this third switch so that the widget will move a bit and you'll avoid any burning. Beyond that, you can also have it display notification icons on the Always On widget, and you can prevent the volume keys from changing volume by enabling the option after that. Then there's a few options for how you'd like to dismiss the Always On display. By default, pressing the power button will make it go away and take you to your lock screen, but you can also enable double tap to dismiss, swipe up to dismiss, and volume key dismiss. Then finally, there's a slider for adjusting the brightness of the widget itself, which just affects the white text portion and not the black background, obviously. But when you got everything set up to your liking, you're all set to go. The next time you turn your screen off, the always on display will pop up a second or two later. If you opted to have it avoid burn in, the widget will move to a different position on the screen every once in a while. But to me, the coolest part about this one, as opposed to some of the other alternatives that aren't coded quite as well, is that your fingerprint sensor should still work like it normally does. So it's a really cool app all around, and yeah it does add a little battery drain, but it gives you one of Samsung's best features on any device. But for the full breakdown, be sure to check out my article on our newly redesigned website at GadgetHacks.com. And as always, we'd appreciate it if you would like and comment on this video and subscribe to our channel. So we'll see you again next time folks, but until then, happy gadget hacking.